Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you the secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down. They cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I might gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord.
Lord, help us to be lavish in both our giving and our loving. I speak in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The anointing of Jesus' feet at Bethany by Mary is one of those stories in the Bible that is deep in meaning. We encounter the same story during Holy Week. Biblical scholars and commentators remark that the purpose of the story is to show that Mary, in her quite humble and sacrificial act, is not only anointing Jesus for his burial, that will follow soon, but also Mary is anointing Jesus as king and high priest. It is Jewish tradition that kings and high priests are anointed with oil. In this radical act, we see Mary confessing and acclaiming Jesus as high priest, as king. The fact that Mary anoints his feet and not, let's say, his head, like other kings and high priests, reminds us that there is something very unique about Jesus. Something about his servanthood, something about his humility that differentiates him from the other kings and priests. Jesus is the Son of God and chose not to position himself into a place of high earthly power, but instead walked among us, dining and conversing with outcasts and sinners, publicans and prostitutes. This is our God, an itinerant rabbi with filthy feet. And Mary anoints those filthy feet with her hair. In this act, we find that Mary is, uh, quite frankly, letting her hair down and lavishly pouring out all that she has at the feet of her beloved. The Song of Solomon reminds us uh, in chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, listen to this. While the king was at the table, my nard gave forth its fragrance. My beloved is to me a bag of myrrh that lies between my breasts. My beloved is to me a cluster of henna blossoms in the vineyards. To dig a little deeper... Last year, Martin Smith reminded us that the mere amount of the nard being used mirrors that at Jesus' tomb, where we find Nicodemus supplying it. This amount of nard indicates the lavishness of God. This amount of nard being used at the home of Lazarus by Mary and the amount used at Jesus' tomb is nothing short of complete overkill. People in close proximity to this amount of nard or perfume would essentially have to cover their mouth and nose and eyes with the garments to be able to stomach it. If the stench of death leaves those around it wincing and keeping their distance, then this amount of nard would cause those around this, this amount of the costly perfume to virtually bleed from the eyes uh, and, and run for the hills. This is a huge amount of perfume. Just think about middle school boys when they get into their father's Old Spice. <laughs> but Jesus is not a middle school boy who has found his father's Old Spice and got a little too excited. Jesus is the king of all kings, the great high priest of all those in the line of great high priests. All this is to say that the amount of perfume and oil being used here proves to be pointing to a deeper spiritual meaning. This amount of nard is used to express the lavishness of God. The lavishness of his love, the lavishness of his mercy, the lavishness of his grace in the fragrant offering he gives once and for all in his son, Jesus. 
God's love is completely over the top. It is offensive. Clearly Judas thinks so. And so we who watch from a distance like Judas might also be a bit like the older brother in the parable of the prodigal son, a little resentful of the perceived wastefulness of this act of honor and intimacy. We must not confuse the imagery of God being lavish with the lifestyles of the rich and famous. There are those who hoard their money and spend their time on earth in gluttony and accumulation of wealth and empire building, piling up resources for themselves, living lavish lifestyles of abundance. But then there's God, who is lavish in a different way. God in Christ pours out his love to all indiscriminately and completely, keeping nothing for himself. Nothing. The famous scene from Les Miserables uh, plays out in my head. Jean Valjean, after spending years in prison, is released and he's destitute. He cannot find anywhere to sleep. He is hungry. No one will help him because he is a convict. His papers and the prison number on his chest label him as hopeless, as no good. Until he wanders into a monastery. There the bishop warmly welcomes him with an abundance of supper and a place to sleep. But in the middle of the night, Jean Valjean in his desperation and hopelessness wakes up and steals the silver. He leaves the house but is soon arrested and brought back to the monastery and laid at the floor of the bishop's feet. And the police tell the bishop that Jean Valjean told them that he the, the, the police tell the bishop that Jean Valjean said, The bishop gave this to me. The bishop says, Well, that's right. But you forgot the best. You forgot the thing that I told you to have, which are the candlesticks. Here, would you leave the best behind? This act of lavish giving and grace changes Valjean's traje trajectory. David Zoll, who is John Zoll's brother, our beloved John Zoll, his brother has just come out with a new book called Seculosity how career, parenting, technology, food, politics, and romance became our new religion, and what to do about it. As you can imagine, there's, there's grace all throughout it. Uh, and I and encourage you to get the book. Um, but he writes in it, he writes about a woman named Mary Carr, who uh, in her memoir, Cherry, recounts the lavishness of God's grace. When Mary was 14 years old, while her parents were out of the house, a miserable Mary tried to do herself in by swallowing a handful of pills. She was unsuccessful and wound up sick. When her mother and father returned home, they tenderly nursed her without suspecting uh, the suicide attempt. They attributed the, the throwing up to food poisoning. After a while, her father asked her if there was any food she could stomach. All she thought she could eat would be a plum. But plums were out of season. And so she went to bed. The next morning, her father came into her room with a bushel of plums. Having driven through the night from Texas to Arkansas to get them for her. The lavishness of God's love, God's mercy, God's grace is such that you go to bed craving a plum, knowing all too well that you won't be eating one anytime soon. 
But then you find in the morning that you do not have just one, but a whole bushel. That's the lavishness of God's love. Mary Carr says in her memoir, but it's when you sink your teeth into the plum that you make a promise. The skin is still warm from riding in the sun in daddy's truck. And the nectar runs down your chin. And you snap out of it, or you are snapped out of it. Never again will you lay a hand against yourself, not so long that there are plums to eat. And somebody, anybody who gives enough of a damn to haul them to you. That's how you acquire the resolution for survival that the coming years will demand. You don't earn it. It's given. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of God made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our As God's new people formed in Christ Jesus, let us join in prayer to God who makes all things new, saying, O God, our Savior, hear our prayer. Draw your church more deeply into the reality of Christ's sufferings, so that everyone whom you have called in him may show forth the power of his resurrection. We remember Skip, our bishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and remembering St. Stephen's Episcopal Church and the Anglican Church of Ireland. O oh God, our Savior, Amen. renew the spirit of hope in every human society and nation. Invigorate us that we may journey forward into the future you promise. O oh God, our Savior, Amen. Rescue from fear those who are deprived of their human needs or their human rights. Give them their share of the dignity you confer on all your children. O oh God, our Savior. Amen. Grant to all who are preparing for baptism and confirmation and to this assembly a heart open to your heart word that all may embrace your promise Heed your commands and declare your praise. O God, our Savior, Hear our we pray in thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks to all who serve at home or overseas, in the military or in mission or outreach work, and their families. For George, Alan, Keen, Andrew, Tim, Bob, Joseph, John, 
Elizabeth, Kristen, Jake, Patrick, Drew, and Edward. O oh God, our Savior, for all in any need, the hungry, the homeless, and the oppressed, the sick, and the troubled, remembering Paula, Caitlin, John, Katie, Jeff, Bill, Sandra, Elizabeth, Bratton, Martha, Shannon, Pooh, Robert, Pat, Mike, Patty, Ray, Lynn, Witt, Tommy, Josie, George, and Eason. We pray for all who have died that they may rest in peace in the presence of God. Remembering Carol Letelier, Charlie Roberts, James Taylor Hutchinson, Carolyn Boykin Wilson, Catherine Keener, and Ernest F. Hollings. O God, our Savior. Almighty and everlasting God, you have hate nothing, nothing you have made, made and forgive the sins, sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Welcome, and you plan on joining us in Hanahan Hall immediately following the service for some refreshment and fellowship together. Uh, all the various notices in the bulletin, you'll see our services for Holy Week listed. Um, and also a special note this afternoon, special music as we have a Lenten Even song at 4 p.m. I encourage you to consider being part of that congregation this afternoon. Also draw your attention to pages 13, 14, and 15 of your parish uh, bulletin. And what you'll see is uh, the kneelers continue to reproduce. I'm not sure if we found out the cause, but they're, uh, they're everywhere and they're more and more beautiful. And of course, in making these available for use in the church, many people are involved. Those who offer them in memory or of honor of loved ones, organizations, um, ministries in the life of the church, also those who prepare them, design them, and of course the stitching of them as well. So we've dedicated six of them at the nine o'clock Eucharist, and now we'll dedicate the remaining ten, along with the beautiful cushions on our canon stalls. I'm going to invite, if you have been involved in any way in the, the shaping of these kneelers, would you please come forward at this time so that we can hold them up and show the congregation? Please come forward if you've offered a kneeler, helped stitch a kneeler, even if you've danced around them for that matter. Uh, and in particular, you'll see some of the kneelers. Please pick them up when you come up and show them to the congregation. You'll also notice that one of the kneelers has especially been made for EFM education for ministry. If you've been involved in EFM, would you stand up and be counted amongst the faithful? This shows you how many people are involved in this ministry. Oh, and here comes Chris. There must be a photograph. <laughs> Hold them all up. Come up the stairs a little bit. Come up the stairs. Well, first and foremost, we must get a holy picture. Make sure they're visible. Beautiful. 
smile and say whatever you'd like to say. Now don't go anywhere, hold them up still. Let's offer a prayer over them. Everybody would bow their heads in prayer. O Lord God Almighty, we thank you that you've put it into the hearts of your people to make offerings for your service. I have been pleased to accept their gifts. Be with us now as we set apart these kneelers and cushions to honor the faithfulness of your people and in memory of loved ones gone before us. All this we do to your praise and glory and in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We dedicate these kneelers and cushions. We do so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Glory be to you, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray. And grant that we, by the power of your Holy Spirit, we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, we offer you through him this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Granted by his merits and death, and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offenses, and fill us all who share in this Holy Communion with your grace and heavenly blessing through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honor and glory be yours Almighty Father now and forever Amen. now as our Savior Christ has taught us we are bold to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy
We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls walk through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Would you stand, please? In the name of God, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. to thee, O Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given to us, for all the pains and insults you have borne for us. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, that we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. in the name of Christ. Thank you. 